Well, in this program, we're going to learn how to use counters and running totals. So as you look at what we have here, we've got a blue button that's going to score us five points, a green button gets us one point, a red button causes us to lose two points, and we're going to keep track of how many times a, any button has been clicked and our total points. So it's a little bit like a scoreboard. The number of button clicks is simply going to go up by one every time. That's a counter. Every time something happens, you go up by one. Maybe counting laps in a race, goals scored in a soccer game. Those all go up by one every time. Total points, that's going to vary based on how many points we scored or lost with the button that we clicked. So that's what our goal is, and let's find out how we're going to do it. Um, I've already coded the exit button, so we'll check out that excitement. It says this.close. And you can already see you've got the blue click button getting ready. So I'll double click on that so you can fully see what we want to have happen. We want to update the counter of button clicks and update the running total of points. A uh, little tr spelling trouble there. Only one T in points. I bet I copied and pasted that everywhere. Yep. So I'll just take care of that. But you notice that as I scroll through these, the red button, the green button, the blue button, they're all going to need to access the same variable. If we're going to keep track of how many clicks there have been, we are going to have to use what we would have more of a class level or a global variable or a field variable. So instead of declaring the variable here in the blue button click event, I'm going to go up here between where it says public partial class form one colon form and public form one. We like to keep variables as private as we can, but that isn't always possible because in this case we need, hey, we have more than one button click event that has to be able to access the variable. And I'm going to have a variable called clicks and I'm also, and I'm going to set it equal to zero right now because it's going to keep going up. I'm also going to have a variable called total points and I will also declare it here because all the button click events, and as we'll discover later, the button that's going to clear the form or reset it has to be able to access this variable. It needs to be able to both see the variable and change the variable. So we're declaring them here. We do that with any variable that needs to be seen by more than one method. If a variable only needs to be seen by one button click or one other method, then we declare it there. All right, so clicks is how many times the users have clicked on a button. One way to make clicks go up is to go clicks equals clicks plus one. Remember this is not an algebra class or a math class. That's not an equation. So if it bothers you to see that and say hey that's not true, well we're not evaluating truth. It's an assignment statement and we always take the right hand side and assign it to the left. So if clicks is seven, seven plus one is eight, now clicks is eight. So in computer science, this is a totally legitimate and legal way to express a statement and to set a value. To see it, I'll go lbl numclicks.txt equals clicks.toString. So if we run the program, every time we click on the blue button, we will see that the number of clicks goes up by one. That's one way to make a value go up by one. Another way is to do plus equals one. So I'm going to go to the green button now. I could have double clicked on the green button to get there also. And for updating the counter of clicks, instead of writing clicks equals clicks plus one, like I did here, I'll go clicks equals, no, don't do that. I'll go clicks plus equals one that will bump it up by one or increment it by one. I'm still going to use this same line of code to display it. So let's check it out. The blue button, the clicks go up by one. The green button, the clicks go up by one. We could express it either way you want. The mistake I almost made was to say equals plus one. That means you're actually setting the value to positive one. So if I do this, that's not going to give me what I want. It'll work, but not the way I'm expecting. So check this out. Here's the blue button. We go up by one and all that. Here's the green button 
and it just set the value to positive 1. So there's a big difference between plus equals 1 and equals positive 1. I want plus equals 1. And we can do the same thing on the red button. I'll just scroll down here, clicks. You could do it either way. I'll go plus equals 1 because it's a little quicker. And I'll update the label. And now any button we click, our click counter will go up by 1. Doesn't matter if it's red, green, blue. It all goes up by 1. And that's a way to keep a running count. But you notice those buttons also score us some points. Well, we can use some very similar ideas. I'll go to the button blue click event. And to update the running total of points, I could go total points equals total points plus 5, because that's how many points are scored with the blue button. And if I display this in lbl num points dot text, it'll be total points dot to string. It'll work. Button clicks up by one, but check out those total points going up by five every single time. And that's okay. That's one way to code that. But we could also go with plus equals five. So I'll comment that out to remind you that we can go with an even shorter one that total points plus equals five. Take whatever total points was and bump it up by 5, or increase or increment it by 5. Runs the same, a little bit shorter to write the code. Our red button is worth 1 point, so total points here will go up by 1. And I'll display it. So blue makes us go up by 5, green goes up by 1. Sorry if I said red earlier, it's a green button that does that. The red button actually is going to make us lose points. There's more than one way to do this, but just like we can go plus equals, we can go minus equals. So I can say total points minus equals 2. I could also say total points equals total points minus 2. You could even say total points plus equals negative 2. So we'll check this out. That red button, we lose 2 every time. The green bumps us up, up 1, 1. The blue one is going to move us up by 5. Everything's going okay. But let's put some thought into what happens when we clear or reset the form. What are some things that have to be reset? We know that you have to get these labels back to zero. But don't forget, we also have got to make the actual variables go back to zero also. So, let's go to that clear click event. What needs to be reset? Well, the labels have to be reset. So I'm going to go LBL num clicks dot text equals. I could actually just put a zero in quotation marks. That'll do it. For both of them. And it will make the display look like it's been reset. Do some button clicking here. And when I clear it out, it was a 7 and a 9. I'll clear it out, they're gone. But as soon as I click another button, it just picks up where we left off. That's because I didn't actually change the value of the variables. So those have to be reset also. Clicks has to go back to zero. And total points has to go back to zero. We'll reset those. Now, we'll get some button clicking going on. We'll clear or reset the form, and we actually do start over. If you had reset these variables first, and done the labels next, you could have had, for instance, lbl num clicks dot text equals clicks with dot to string, because then at that point, clicks would equal zero. You're going to now take the time to add three more buttons to this form and 
have it make things go up or down as you wish. But you aren't limited to just plus equals and minus equals. For example, if you wanted to make something, um, I'll just code it here with a comment, you could make points double, which means multiply by two, and that would be using times equals. Or you could say total points equals total points times two. But times equals works, and you could say times equals two. Same for division. But of course, remember right now we have integers, so you're not going to get any decimal answers. If you have seven points and divide it by two, you're going to end up with three. If you wanted to have the ability to get decimals for points, you would need to come back up to here and change these to doubles. So be as creative as you want to be. You might discover that you can actually go beyond the capacity of what integers can have. But make three more buttons with whatever colors you want and make the, button, the number of button clicks go up by one and increments by one every time and have the total points change according to the rules you have established for that button.